Right. I'm here with my friends Zach, Tyler, and Sean, and we're here to talk to you about the future of streaming media. Now, first things first, what do you guys think is the future of streaming media? DRM, which D means Digital Restrictions Management. Uh, as more and more of these media companies are opening up to releasing their technology to the consumer through wireless streaming, they're going to want to find different ways to avoid piracy. So I feel that uh, digital restrictions management is going to go, it's just going to skyrocket over the next 10 years as the video, the video codecs become harder and harder to decrypt and steal from the streams themselves. Uh, I think right now piracy is a huge problem for the, the media industries that be and uh, they're going to have to find a way to combat it. Otherwise I'm just going to keep stealing movies. Now, another thing with the whole streaming media thing. Do you think that movie stores that we actually go into and rent movies from, do you think those will be out of business within the next, say, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years, Absolutely. yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, if, as you look around now, they're already starting to close. Right, I mean, some of the local ones that we've had for years are just uh, on their way out. We've had a few closed down now. Like Pretty much every second cinema is Every wow, second it's... cinema, every blockbuster, family video is family still keeping video its is head still, under. Yeah. I am surprised. What I don't like about family video, though, is that they're doing the the dirty trash-talking campaign where, oh, well, we have Connect games that Redbox doesn't. We've got this that, you know, Netflix doesn't. It's like, dude, come on. Just understand exactly what you're trying to approach here. Movies. You're trying to do movie rentals, and you're pretty much in a dying industry. Just accept that you have new movies. What's really going to affect is just movie distribution as a whole, I think. I mean, it's not going to be anytime soon, but I think, I mean, picture this. You get home, uh, there's a new movie out this month, and you decide you want to stream it to your house rather than just go all the way to the theater, pay for overpriced snacks, and take your annoying family with you. So let's just say that you do that for a second. You get instant media. You can pause it whenever you want to go to the bathroom or whatever. You can get as many snacks as you like. I mean, it, it completely empowers the consumer while draining uh, pretty much all the staying power of things like theaters and rental outlets and all sorts of uh, different distributors. It cuts them from the equation. So I think the entire industry is going to need to focus on shifting over. See, the thing is with me, I feel like most of these big name movie stores will also start to allow instant streaming videos. Like Blockbuster is already kind of starting to do that a little bit, but it's not getting as much as much notice as notice as uh, Netflix is because Netflix Blockbuster is there first. Yeah, and Netflix is uh, pretty much taking over the industry right now. Like the only problem with Netflix is that it's currently in its current incarnation, it's not entirely cross-platform because it relies on Microsoft Silverlight rather than yeah. Flash, yeah. which I think is kind of stupid. But um, you see, like Amazon starting up all sorts of new services. We've got Blockbuster, we've got Redbox. I think over the next few years, we're gonna get. Uh, I have heard that Redbox is gonna start doing like instant streaming, also, yeah. but it's gonna be so much cheaper than Netflix. I heard it's supposed to be about three bucks a month instead of eight. Compared oh, to Netflix. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Like, see, it's going to just become a digital arms race. Uh, what I Have you guys ever used uh, Netflix on, like, just to stream on your, like, iPod or laptop or whatever? Yeah, I do I, that a lot. I don't like the idea that they have um, a limit of only two things you can stream. Because our family heavily relies on Netflix. We don't pay for cable. We don't pay for satellite. We have Netflix and we have uh, Roku Box. And the Roku box will stream Netflix through the uh, the Roku box instantly. So you can constantly watch a bunch of different TV show seasons, and it's nice and convenient because you don't have to worry about interruptions and commercials. What I don't like is the idea that you can watch Netflix downstairs on the, the Wii, watch it upstairs on the Roku, and that's it. I can't go and watch, I don't know... South Park or Family Guy or whatever in my laptop or on my laptop in my room because somebody else is watching something else. And I think that's definitely a current limitation of it. Um, I, I think just uh, one of the biggest benefits to Netflix is their vast library of media. Oh, they, they, there's no doubt they have an ever expanding library of just movies and TV shows, and I love how I can go and watch Mystery Science Theater 3000 on uh, Netflix no problem. Because trying to find it on something like YouTube is like 
damn near impossible to do without finding a bunch of different uh, different parts that are just cut up constantly or just crappy sound quality. Or it'll have those foreign like subtitles, subtitles. on the bottles. Yeah. Or better, bottom. The, the worst is when somebody videotapes their own screen. On the yeah. other, I, I have to say that on the other hand, I think because of all this streaming and all these services starting up, YouTube is probably going to start kicking it into high gear for independent film distribution, and that's going to be fucking huge. Can I say that? I'll let it. Okay, just say it, just say it again. <laughs> and that's going to be huge. Um, just the idea that any anyone can go make a movie, put it together, get with some kind of independent distributor, and actually have it as a full feature film on YouTube is pretty revolutionary, considering the vast scope of the audience. And... Anyways, ha! Um, now, another topic I'd like to touch upon is like video games. Do you think that the video game industry will start having instant streaming video games? Because right now, exactly. on, the, on the PlayStation Network, you're allowed to get like old PlayStation 1 games instantly streamed to your PlayStation okay. It's not necessarily streamed, you still have to download it. Yeah. Well, it's okay. still. Exactly how big are the files? Because think about what you're streaming. You're, you're streaming, but with the movie, the max you're streaming is like, Probably 700 megabytes. Now, in stark contrast, I would like to bring to attention the on-live microconsole service. Basically, they allow you to play pretty much any game on any platform through a streaming service, and the playback is phenomenal. For this, especially for this stage, considering how early it is, it allows pretty much 720 or uh, whatever the high res, high def resolution 1080. would be, 1080p even. Uh, whatever the video games allow, it allows full playback of that with almost no lag. And it's a subscription service to pretty much any game you want to play. Because the way I see it, I think lag is going to be a huge thing for files, yeah. that thing. And but like, suppose they could, suppose they could scale out the servers to be to be able to handle that kind of load. Okay. Like you could see, see them sitting on a billion dollar industry I, pretty I could, much. Exactly how big would the servers, how big are these things going to be. I don't know, how big are the WoW servers? The WoW servers can run up to a petabyte of information at a time. Well, suppose that this startup is so successful that it gets to that point. Okay. But doesn't WoW lag all the time? WoW will lag depending on... That depends your, on the hardware. Yeah, your, your hardware. Um, they'll have rolling updates and whatever, but that's getting into something different. As far as streaming video games goes, if you have the horsepower behind it, I think it is possible. But it also depends on the hardware on the user output. Because I can go ahead and say that I can go and stream a video game or whatever, but if you do it on a crappy, like, 8 inch television with a third generation Wii or Xbox 360 or whatever, it's just not going to cut it. Um, you know, if they get to the point where they, uh, they can stream all these video games without having to worry about lag or potential piracy issues or disconnections, I'm all for it. I think the disconnections would be a really huge yeah. factor to it because, I mean, once you, like, what if it just, you're playing it, and well, then just well, all of a sudden it stops. Look at, uh, look at uh, Netflix as far as how they, you know, how they'll play and the disconnecting rate and exactly how well they stream. Um, I think that will be an important break-off point, too, is that it still cannot replace the idea of fully owning the actual yeah, master yeah. copy. I would rather own the master copy because it's it's always nice to have something that you can just pick up and take. And You know, I have all my movies backed up on an external hard drive. I love the fact that I have a hard copy, you know, just able to, you know, put it on my shelf or store on my hard drive instead of having to stream it where I have to worry about a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, and you said... Um, you're comparing it to the Netflix screen for streaming, but Netflix doesn't have to worry about controls or all that. Like, pausing and fast-forwarding, maybe, yes. but you're not, like, having the controller in your hands at all times. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's where the lag is going to be huge. I think. Not only that, but are we talking about video games that will support multiplayer? Yeah. I, I was thinking that, too, yeah, because I mean, be multiplayer gameplay right now is becoming a huge factor. I mean, look at WoW. Look at Call of Duty. Look yeah. at... Yeah, I know. Look at DC Universe. I mean, all those games are like jam-packed with online features and online play. 
that it's become like the key for those games. That's the only reason why they're bought or whatever. So I'm thinking the instant streaming would also take part in like massive online play as well. <clears throat> uh, it could be a very well good, you know, selling point. But I think what you're forgetting too is exactly what makes games like Call of Duty and WoW sell. Most people I heard that have bought Black Ops play for Nazi zombies. Well, like, I don't know. that's a story for a different. Day. Yeah. As far as instant streaming goes and the history of it, I think that we will get to a point where we can stream movies that are out. You know what would be in theaters right now that we will have the option to go and stream a movie the or a movie that's in theaters right now. But, but would you have to pay for it though? Yes, it's probably no doubt you would have to pay like some sort of subscription or like an inflated price. From, yeah. The question is, are you willing to do that, or are you willing to just go ahead and go to a movie theater and have the nostalgia moment? Because me, I, honestly, I would rather go to a movie theater and. Uh, watch the movie there instead of my own house just yeah. because it's not my own house yeah and plus you get to like react with everybody else in the exactly movie. i mean how many people like no just not knocking digital streaming down and you know busting its nuts or anything but how many people would just love to go to a movie theater and heckle somebody to for something stupid like you remember going to a movie theater and heckling someone because of their kid yeah Exactly. Now, I can't do that with digital streaming. Sure you can. Just get on Xbox chat. <laughs> if you're watching something... <coughs> well, okay, yes. I can heckle a kid. I can't heckle somebody else's kid. Point... Just... Point it right ruins there. the movie it theater movies, experience. It ruins the movie going experience. Which is terrible because yes. the movie experience kind of sucks, but... but that's So, uh... I think sometimes that's, that's what you remember the most, like... I remember going to see Friday the 13th. I thought the movie was good just because of the experience we had. Yeah, well, that's when we all went thing. to go see Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Like, there are people that go to movie theaters and dress in costume for Star Wars openings. Harry Potter. Um, you can't do that if you just digitally stream uh, movies because then you just look like a creepy four year old dude in your mom's basement wearing a Dark Vader costume. But then hey, you know, maybe like chat roulette will support it. Maybe. <laughs> But then you look like a creepy 40-year-old dude out in public. Hey, at least you'll be looking like a creepy 40-year-old dude out in public with about 30 other people. Oh, yeah, I guess Instead that's of just by good. yourself. Yeah. yeah. He's got a point. Yeah. But there's safety in numbers. I think that's pretty much all we needed to talk about. Um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you were more informed about streaming media. Or just entertained at us, just totally getting off topic. Exactly. Um, I would like to thank my friends, Zach. Tyler and Sean. Um, I, I again, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you. Good night and Godspeed. GI Joe. <laughs>